What's going on everyone? This is Vince with vshred.com and if you're struggling with building your glutes, no matter how many squats or cable kickbacks you do, then today I'm going to share seven mistakes with you that you probably don't even realize you're making and tell you how you can fix them so that you can stop wasting time and build them glutes. I'm going to keep on going up till the lights go down. All right, so like I said, if you're struggling to build your glutes, today we're gonna go over the seven mistakes that you're probably making. Uh, but before we do, you should know that part of the reason stubborn body parts like glutes might not respond well to training can be due to two specific genetic factors that you have very little control over. The first is muscle belly length. Shorter muscle bellies simply don't have the same muscle building potential as larger muscle bellies or longer muscle bellies. And muscle bellies, by the way, are just the, the meaty part of the muscle that contracts. So this bigger area of my bicep is the muscle belly. And its length will determine how big your bicep peaks get, which is totally dependent on your genetics. And your glutes are no different. And it's one reason why everyone's glute shape is different. But the second is muscle fiber density. How many muscle fibers you have within a particular muscle is known as its muscle fiber density. So when you train with resistance, those fibers grow. So training can have some impact, but it takes years of consistency and most of your muscle fiber density is due to your genetics. This means that training and eating for your body type is crucial if you want to see the best and fastest results possible. And that's why we made our free body type quiz to help you understand the best type of training and eating depending on what your specific goal is. And if you want to check that out, just click the link in the description right below this video right now. But now that we've addressed the genetic factor, let's get right into what you can do and what you're probably doing wrong and how you can fix that. So mistake number one, you're doing way too much cardio. Now I'm not saying cardio isn't important, it's absolutely vital for heart health and it's gotta be done if fat loss is your goal. But if you're pounding on the pavement mile after mile or spending hours on the treadmill just casually walking without placing emphasis on glute resistance training, your glutes will not only not grow, but you could be hindering growth. Because if your goal is glute gains, you need to prioritize weight training over cardio and do more hit over those long steady state sessions. Try things like stair climber or high incline treadmill walking or sprints or a fan bike or sled pushes. Just remember the goal is always to preserve muscle mass, not to burn it off. Mistake number two, you're not eating enough. And this is probably the most common mistake that I see made. And the reason it's so bad is because muscle needs food to grow and you can't be afraid to eat if that's the case. To grow your glutes, and I mean really grow them, you need to be eating at least at maintenance calories, possibly in a surplus. Now, most of you watching this are probably wanting to lose weight or lose fat, but still somehow grow your glutes, right? And well, technically it is possible. You just need to focus on training your glutes hard and often and make sure that you're incorporating fat burning, non-muscle wasting cardio like high intensity interval training rather than steady state, like I mentioned. Now, mistake number three is overtraining. Now, the glutes can handle a lot of volume. Some people even train them in some capacity every day. But you could be going overboard by doing too much variety or too much volume and not letting your glutes rest, which is where the growth actually happens. Because in order to be able to repair themselves and therefore grow, you need to make sure that you're letting yourself rest, not only in between sets, but also in between glute workouts. So if you're planning on training glutes multiple times a week, that's fine. Just don't do them on back-to-back -back days and make sure that you're eating the right nutrients to fuel your body and allow your muscle to repair. Now on the flip side, there's also a high likelihood that many of you watching this are doing the complete opposite. You need to make sure that you're training your glutes at least two times a week, if not more, every week to see the best results. But this means that you need to mix your glute sessions up one day, maybe have a compound lift day where you're doing these big heavy lifts and then on another day have just a pure body weight workout or high band or high rep band workouts, which actually brings me to mistake number four, lifting way too heavy or not lifting heavy enough. So there's a fine line here, but if you want to sculpt your glutes, 
You need to challenge yourself every single session. But that does not mean throwing a ton of weight around with bad form. If you attempt to lift heavier than your glutes can actually handle, all you're gonna do is end up recruiting your quads and your hamstrings and possibly even your spinal erectors, which can actually cause your waist to get bigger, not to mention you could also injure yourself. So you need to drop the weight and really think about the muscle that you're aiming to engage instead of just going through the motions. Focus on slowing your tempo and squeezing and maybe even pausing at the hardest part of each rep, which is at the top. Now on the flip side, you don't wanna go so light that you're pumping away for 20 or 30 reps with ease. Lightweight isn't nearly as effective at sculpting muscles as lifting heavier weights for fewer reps, but you don't have to pile on the plates either. You just need to work with proper form to total exhaustion or failure, as I call it. Literally go until you can't do another rep with perfect form. Now this often leads to the question of how should you be training your glutes, which leads perfectly into my next mistake, which is you aren't focusing on isolating your glutes and you aren't training all three parts of your glutes. Compound movements like deadlifts and squats are key for strength and sculpting your entire leg. But the problem is that these types of movements hit several muscles at one time. With legs, unless you're making some specific form tweaks, this usually means your quads are gonna get hammered first and then your hamstrings and then your glutes. And I'm not saying that you should skip out on these. Here at V-Shred, we like to put them in as the first couple of exercises in our training plans, but you also need to do lots of work with isolation movements that hit all three parts of the glute. That means the glute maximus, the glute medius, and the glute minimus. So all three of the muscles. And there are endless options for glute isolation exercises, but a few examples would be variations of hip thrusts and glute bridges, which I actually just made a video about both of those and how to do them properly. I'll put a card to it up here. But now let's rewind to before you even begin your lift for mistake number six, which is you're jumping straight into your workout without activating your glutes. Glute activation drills before you get into your main lift is huge for several reasons and is especially crucial if you sit most of the day for work, which is most of us. And all it really takes is like five to 10 minutes because the purpose of a warm up isn't a workout, it's just to warm the muscle up. And some things that you could do are a couple rounds of band side steps or air squats or body weight hip thrusts or bridges, but you wanna make sure that you're squeezing your glutes hard during these activation drills. These should burn a little bit. Just remember, you're not trying to exhaust the muscle fully, you're just trying to get a little pump going and then hop into your bigger lifts. Now, finally, we have mistake number seven, which is you're being too impatient. Sculpting and growing any muscle takes time. Changes are not gonna happen overnight. And depending on your body type, it might even take you months or years to see massive changes, but it will happen as long as you stay consistent. So my recommendation for this is to take pictures along the way, because week to week, you're probably not gonna notice any changes, but month to month, you will. And then I know it can be hard to remember all these tips, and even more frustrating to come up with a plan that ensures that you're hitting every single muscle in your glutes without underworking or overworking them. But these tips will work. And I'd suggest writing them out on a piece of paper and keeping that paper somewhere handy so that you can refer back to it when you need to. And you can also use some of these tips for all muscle groups. But that's all for today's video, guys. If you found it helpful, please do us a favor and click the thumbs up button below. It really helps our channel be seen by new people who could also benefit from videos like this. But thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and I'll see you 